My name is Amul, and I am a teacher at Bling ABC, and this is... I am Elizabeth, I am a teacher at Bling ABC, and this is a fun and interesting conversation with teacher Amal on how to do feedbacks for the different lessons we do with the students. I hope you enjoy it. So, how do you give immediate feedback, Mr. Amal Stevens? And with regards to immediate feedback, do you only rely on the star or the reward system that's on the platform? Or do you also have like a little card to be like, hey, you get a gold star or something like that? I mainly rely on the inbuilt reward system. For instance, Bob has two stars up here, but he's got one star in the computer. But Mary has two stars here, but only one star's up there. Mm. It can get a bit confusing in the long run for them. So I try to, if I do a secondary reward system, I'm doing it as a group. So I don't know, I'll grab one of my toys. Oh, I haven't got him. The koala. <laughs> I have a koala, but he's dropped off. And I'll bring him out and I'll yes. get them to chat to the class as a group. That's my group reward system. I'm more of a appraisal person. For me, it's that yeah. thing of you read. I'm like, oh my God, that was awesome. That was so great. 10 out of 10. I'm too hyper and excited when people do good things. So for me, I'm just like happy with a big smile and I'm like, 10 out of 10. That that's was it, that's so it, that's good. It. I'll give him a big clap, high five, yes. that kind of stuff. That's my secondary. Yeah, I agree. If Selena is reading and Selena's making a mistake in, in the sentence that she's reading, then I'll stop her and then I'll be like, okay, Selena, the pronunciation of that word is like this. So let's try it again. Okay. And then when she does it right, then I'll be like, that's perfect. Well done. 10 out of 10. Wendy jot down that. Uh, she finally got it right. When do you put that down or do you just remember it? I just try to remember. For me, most, okay. most cases, it's just about recalling what the lesson was about. And I think the one thing when it comes to giving feedback after the lesson, I always go through the lesson plan one more time as I'm writing the yeah. Um It's just a little bit of a reminder of the words, the sentences, and then of course my recollection comes into play and then I'm like, oh yeah, they were talking about something that was related to this word. And then I'm like, oh, that was such a fun story that you said with regards to this word. I'm so happy that you understood it so well. That's how I do it. On my feedbacks, I will always write down what the students did well and what they didn't do well or what they need to work on more or less in the class. Um, never feel afraid to write that down. You can always have a piece of paper next to your computer and jot down notes on it of what you think they need to work on specifically, whether it be like pronunciation or the way they're spelling or even nice. just listening or what their behavior is in general. So you can get that down. Never feel afraid to take down notes. It's always going to help you in the long run. Otherwise, you're going to have those situations where you're going 40 minutes into class and you end the class and you can't remember what Bob said. Or what <laughs> that is so true. I am more of the person who's like, once I'm done with the lesson, I immediately do my report. Unless if I'm distracted by the next one, because I feel that I'm not very good at multitasking. So I always need to give the students my full attention because I'm going to be writing something and I won't be hearing what they're like, wait, what? What did you say? So, yeah. but I like the note taking, so I will try that. <laughs> So this is my next question with regards to you taking down notes. So when you do take notes and you are typing out your feedback, are you very um, loquacious, I would say? Do you literally write down everything for them or do you just try to summarize the important parts? Try to summarize the important parts, but it ends up being a bit long-winded because I'm a bit iffy like that. So I try, essentially I'll always open up with Bob is a great student, something they're, they're good on and then what they need to work on and what they need to uh, and then end on a good point again. So it's kind of like that sandwich technique. So you don't want to go, I mean in my opinion, you don't, you don't want to be like, hey they did really well on this, they need to work 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 on this, and just go, all right, okay, see ya. Yes. Because you end on a bad note. You always want to end on a good note. Yes. You always want to give positive reinforcement. So I'm not I'm not heavily negative. I'm never heavily negative. So I'm never like, yeah, Bob sucks. <laughs> I'm never doing that. It's always 
it's always uh, Bob needs to work on this. I think he can do better in this, or he needs to look at this maybe and practice this with mum later. Yes. So I know mum's always by the side of him and yes. give them positive reinforcement as much as I can. Yes. And then they pick up on it. Yes, that's true. I don't. I definitely agree with you on that one. I think it's very helpful as well when the parents are like in the background or they are there for the kids to just ask a few things when they are unsure and that way the parents are also a little bit more involved after the lesson with with helping with the homework and hopefully reading the feedback reports so that they can see exactly <laughs> what we were struggling with together in the lesson. One thing I do want to mention that is it's becoming a, a, a thing on online ESL is a lot of people are using these um, almost templates like the, the custom selections that you can use that yes. give you a template of what to write. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, my only issue with that is if you're using that as a complete thing as you're not you're not customizing it at all for the student. Yeah. You can use that as a basis to be like okay opening line uh, Bob is great in class, he's learning every day, bang, and then you put your actual points of what he's meant to work on there, and then the next one, and then you can end with whatever they have. There's no yes. issue with it, I, can, I know a lot of people use it, and there's, there's nothing wrong with it, as long as you're customizing it yes. per student, yes. no worries in my opinion. I agree. A friend of mine actually did send me a link a few days ago when I was saying that, no, I'm still awake typing away my progress reports because the day got away from me. And he sent me a link and I was like, what? And yes, they actually customize it in such a way that you get a certain phrase for um, reading and writing and pronunciation and listening and everything sounds good when you read it, but it actually doesn't really apply to the student individually. And then it comes back to the point that we discussed as well previously that sometimes you feel like you are repetitive in the comments that you are yeah. writing when you give the feedback but I think sometimes repetition might be necessary so that if they do read the progress reports the feedback reports then at least that way it's gonna stick that okay you know John needs to practice his reading John needs to practice his reading so yes <laughs> What do you do in the situations where you feel you've had, for instance, a, a, a class of the same kids for, I don't know, you've had them for like a year now. Yeah. And you've given the same one. Bob is just, he's never pronouncing his W's. He's never doing W's. He's always pronouncing his V. And every week you keep telling him the same thing. Hey, Bob, you need to practice your W's. Remember, as we do in class, remember what, 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 what? Instead of v, 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 v. That kind of thing. What do you do in the situation where you're constantly just giving the same feedback? Whenever I, f I know that I'm going to repeat myself, I always say, as I have stated in previous feedback reports, I definitely think and strongly encourage Ben to continuously practice his pronunciations of the letter V. Whenever we do take into the, we start doing the, the homework review part, I always try to, you know, target that student that I know was struggling two days ago with this and I'm like yeah. okay so Ben do you remember that we practiced this so what is this word and then yes you can see that they smile because they know they were supposed to practice it but they didn't and then like mm, and then you that's how you out. get it yeah. yes yeah. so I'm just like strongly recommend or I strongly suggest that you just try and practice it how about you try to read more short stories or short sentences or try to practice tongue twisters that practice that certain sound or that certain you know phonic and then try that so maybe trying to give a few ideas that are varied in every feedback that's it trying to extend it rather than just being like hey remember you need to do your homework <laughs> which they never do which oh, they're never gonna do they yeah. have enough homework i don't want to set homework to these guys what about negatives some of the students depending on the level that they're at like the level fours and the level fives they tend to rely on like paying half attention and they're busy doing homework so i'll have this one particular student who will be doing his homework and then i'll be like okay so 
let's say his name is John and I'll say John uh, we are reading can you read with me and then he'll just read the sentence and he'll go back but then he doesn't actually say the words correctly even though he is such a high level and I'll have to be like okay so John please listen to me you are not actually saying these words correctly you are mispronouncing most of these words let's try to read this again and try to pay attention can you focus so I think for me that is my main concern with regards to them having issues or giving negative remarks or you know things like that it's because they are preoccupied with something else while they are in lessons because they are eating or they're talking to mom and dad or they're doing their homework and then it's it's always about if you pay attention this would not be an issue that's that's for me what about you you're always gonna have that one student who's his level is obviously high he's very very clever but He's got kind of distracted doing his homework or playing with like yes. a toy or something like that. And he's just like, banana, 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 banana. And he knows the word and you're like, well, Bob, 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 And he's like, Bob, 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 And you're like, Bob, 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 Bob. And it's an ongoing thing. Yes. Again, taking note in my notes and then putting it into the feedback. But reinforcing and most of all reinforcing it within the class and the time that I have with him because in the notes again he may not read it and may yes. not get to him it is important that the parents are relaying this information and I'm hoping it is happening it does happen in my classes I know the parents are reading and he's getting through but sometimes if you have a demo class or something like that the students are recurring student you're not always going to have that person reading the feedback yes. so it's always important while you're within class to reinforce this kind of feedback that you're giving them or things that you notice so they can fix it or make an adjustment while they're within class. Anything you want to add about difficult, difficult students? Difficult students, you're always going to come across one. It's going to happen. It's just the way it is. Um, if you do, leave what they're doing in the feedback. Do as much as you can in regards to what they're saying in the feedback. Constantly put it there. As long as you're doing it, you're going to be covered in this regard. Um, you can also get in contact with your DING representative and be like, hey, Bob's really disrupting the class like this. But again, if it gets too much, remember that the mute button is your friend. What do you do for positives? So what are you going to say for positives? You got a positive student. Um, I don't know. Bob couldn't say the word apple. And this week he comes back and he's bang, nailed it. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yes. So then I would be like, um, Bob, I am... I am very proud. That's the word I like to use. I'm very proud of the progress you've made, especially in being able to recall the word apple and saying it so well. Um, keep it up. So something like that. Hmm. And That's you? It, yeah. Yeah, similar type of thing. So if I notice Bob struggled with Apple, I'm going to remember it. I'll have it in my notes next to my computer and I'll be like, okay, Bob struggled with Apple, let's let's get Bob. So I'll drag Bob up when the when like homework review or whatever is coming up and I'll be like, yes. oh, Bob, whoa, what's this, Bob? And he, let's say, nails it, Apple. I'll be like, whoa, I'll flip the table over and you'll know what's going <laughs> on, essentially. And then in the feedback come, I'll be like, it's great that I can see that Bob's been doing his homework. He's been practicing. He nailed the word Apple today. I'm very proud. Keep it up, Bob. These are the two words. Can you say habitat? Let's try it. Habitat. Habitat. Let's try it a little more. Ha be tat. One more time. Ha habitat. Oh, okay, Amal. Let's try it a little slowly. Let's go one sound at a time. We'll go ha. 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 B. 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 Tat. Mm -hmm. Tat. Tat. Perfect. That was great. Now we put them together and we say ha, B, tat. You try. Ha, bu, tat. Oh, okay. How about we try it a little slower? Okay, so we'll go ha, B. Ha, B. Ha, B. Tat. Oh, yeah! 
guys. <laughs> All right, that was a difficult student of all. Thanks. <laughs> Deliberately being difficult, but yeah, that's good. That's good. I, 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 the way you handle that, particularly when you put the music to it, is a good way yes. to do it. And then, of course, reinforce positive reinforcement afterwards. You're like, yeah, well. Definitely. All right. Now, comments specifically. What would you put down for the comments for me? All right. I'll say.、Um, okay. Amal was a very、um, energetic student in class. I enjoyed his enthusiasm. He was so fun to talk to. He specifically struggled with the word habitat with regards to its pronunciation. And I would suggest that whenever he learns a new word that is a little difficult, try to break it down into syllables, like we did, ha, be, tat, and try it that way repeatedly. They try it at least three times until it becomes easier to read and say. So something like that. Perfect. I think that's fine. I think what you said is exactly what the student needs to do for someone like me, who is, is a student. <laughs> Any closing notes? Yes. You got teachers, particularly the new teachers coming in and writing feedback. Just try to imagine how you would feel if you were reading that comment or that feedback.、Um, it's that thing of you always need to understand that yes, you want to. Encourage this person, and you want to give them positive remarks. But it's also important to tell them the the negative things, so that they understand that there is still、um, room for improvement. Don't be afraid to not give negative, but call them out on what something they need to work on. If you notice、uh, Bob struggling with whatever, don't be afraid to say what he actually needs to work on. Don't think that it's going to reflect badly on you. As a teacher,、um, but just remember the kind of sandwich format as we're talking about, where you've got the good points and then what they need to work on, and then always end with a good point. As long as you're wording like that, there's no problem. This document that the company sent out about how to actually construct different types of、yeah. feedback reports, I would suggest that every new teacher just reads through all of those examples just to have an idea as to how to go about it. In the lessons, it's always nice for the kids to. Uh, be allowed a little bit of freedom to communicate. Sometimes, as a teacher, you feel like you know more since you speak the language, and you want to speak so much to make sure that they understand. But always remember that it's not about you; it's about them. So allow them a little bit more of free reign. That way, you also have something more to add to your feedback report. Again, if you're like me and you're a bit absent-minded, don't be afraid to take notes. Even if you're looking down and taking notes, it's not a problem. You're taking notes to remember. In the long run, don't feel ashamed to do it. Constructive criticism. Try not to be abruptly negative.、Mm-hmm. You can 100% remember what needs to be improved on. Don't just be like, "Hey, he did this bad. Hey, he did this bad." Be like, "Hey, he needs to work on this. Hey, she needs to work on this." At the end of the day, it's just about having fun, and it's quite interesting when you have these various conversations with the students in the lessons for you to actually see how much they know, how much they enjoy. Talking and just you know that they are actually very eager to improve on their English.